tells his word that he, he alone, he alone is worthy. Hallelujah. Won't you thank God for who he is? It is a blessing to be able to talk to God about who God is. And we thank him for just being who he is. Even if he's not giving us what we want, we thank him for who he is. Let me tell you, he is, he is God. And he is God alone. I, I thank him for just being God. There's, there's no explanation for him. We can't even understand who he is. But we just worship him for being God. For he is God. He's God alone. And he alone is worthy. I tell you, he is worthy. He is worthy. What is he worthy of? He is worthy of our praise. He's worthy of our, our continual lifting up our hands. And he's worthy of the glory. And we come to this Hollywood place today just to say, Lord, thank you. For you are worthy. You are. You alone. You are worthy, Lord. Thank God for being worthy. He is. He, I tell you, he's just worthy. He's, that, there's no way around it. You got to admit to yourself. You thought that he was worthy. You thought that she was worthy. You thought they were worthy. But look at where you have to wind up right back. God alone. He is. He is. He's worthy. They call your attention to the book of Proverbs. Chapter number 14. Proverbs chapter 14. In the Old Testament, the book is Proverbs. Right behind Psalms, the book is Proverbs, chapter 14, verse number 1. Proverbs, chapter 14, verse number 1. When you found it, you will discover these words. The wise woman builds her house, but the foolish pulls it down with her hands. I want to talk about the wise mother. The wise, the wise mother. Let me say happy Mother's Day to every mother, every prospective mother. Every adopting mother, every associated mother, every feeling mother, every woman who has come in touch with children who have made a difference. And I just want to say, if you have no children, adopt your son. You can either legally adopt or just go around your neighborhood, go around your family and and adopt your son. There are children in need of your influence. All around the world, they are in need of your influence. Other than God, the biggest influence on planet Earth is the mother. She can influence children to good, or she can influence children to bad. Her example is one that young people look at and begin to marvel. And even if it's a bad example, children will pattern after the biggest influence other than God, and that is mama. Mama has a way of, of getting a child's attention when no one else can. Mama has, has a way of, of doing things or saying things that will reside in your memory from now on. For many of us in this room, our first teachers were our mothers. And to this day, whether they are 80 or 100 or 60 or 70, it still resides in our spirit what mama did and what mama told us. Amen, amen. When we look at the text, the text declares that a wise woman builds up her house. Uh -huh. 
And when she builds up her house, she, she does her house well. I know the text declares, and I want to make sure that all of the rhetoricians in the room know that I understand it didn't say mother. It did say woman. But in order to really be a mother, you got to be a female. You, you have to be a mother. Men, we make a difference, and, and I know people are traveling today. They are moving throughout the world, going home to see mama. They called her at midnight last night. They, they made sure that they gave mama congratulations for, for just being there. And this morning when I made my call, my call kind of went like, thank you for being a good mother. I'm not, I know, I know, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not naive. I know that there are some mothers that hadn't done what they, want, they need to do. Because they're the influence, people grade them on what they have done and what they have not done. I just want to say to you today, forgive her for it. Forgive about it. Forget about it. Leave it alone. And just you become a better mother. Men, I know we, we make a difference. We, it takes a man to teach a boy how to be a man. It takes a man to teach a girl what they expect in a man. Uh -huh. But ultimately, the influence will come from the woman of the house. Uh -huh. It will come from the woman of the house because God has given her that nurturing spirit. Yep. A wise woman, the wise writer here writes that there's a wise woman and there's a foolish woman. All right, all right. Just one verse. He says that there's a woman that is wise and this wise woman builds up her house. This wise woman constructs a house. This wise woman puts the house together for the good. But it says a foolish woman tears it down. And when I look at this word, tear down, it looks like she tears it down brick by brick with her own hand. Wood by wood, pieces by pieces, she can tear it down. I submit to every woman that's under the sound of my voice, be wise. Be wise and make sure that the influence that you give off is godly influence. When he says, he says a, a wise woman builds up her house, he's not talking about physically getting out there with hammer and nail. He's not talking about a saw or drill. The wise writer is talking about this woman who builds her house up with care. She builds her house up with causing others to do well. So we won't even talk about today, we won't even mention again this foolish woman, we want to talk about the wise woman. All right, all right. The word wise is a root word for the word wisdom. It means that she uses practical skills, practical experiences, a practical lifestyle to pour into young people and make them successful. Let me tell you, some of the things that I see young people do today, I just can't do it. Even almost, I'm one year from 60. And even at one year from 60, I wouldn't dare let my mama hear me say some of the things. I wouldn't dare let my mama see me do some of the things that young folk do today. Young people have become so bold today, they'll put it out there. They'll show it out there to the whole world to see. Young girls, whatever you do, save something for your husband to see. Save the honey for the honeymoon. Save something that will be new that he hadn't seen and the world hadn't seen. I, I, wonder, I wonder how these celebrities do all these things and post all these videos and then they have two, three children and their children seeing them dressed like that, acting like that, laying like that, hack, uh, talking like that, cussing like that. I just couldn't see it, Sister Henry. I'm almost 60 and I, I can't see me saying certain things that will crush my mama's heart. My first point today is 
A wise mother has godly character. A, a, wise, a wise mother has godly character. She, she carries herself like a woman of God. Now, I, I realize we got new stuff on the scene that they didn't have when I was out there. I, I realize that, that they talk in a way that, that I didn't talk back then. I, I realize that, that women call each other's names and it's okay with them. And they will call each other the name, and it, it's the name that you call a female dog. And they will call each other the name, and they, they will say, yeah, yeah, and they would answer to it. That's not becoming to a godly mother. The first thing you have to understand, as a mother, you have to walk with God. And you have to walk with God in such a way until children see God in you. Till your friends see God in you. My question is, what do people see in you? Do they see a godly woman? Do they see a nagging woman? Do they see a frustrated woman? Do they see a confused woman? When you walk with God, God can clear it up for you. So you need to understand that when you're going to be a faithful mother, a wise mother, you must be a godly mother. That godly mother must be born again. You can try to be godly, but you can't do it. You have to, you have to make sure that you receive Jesus Christ as your personal savior. Because the things that we can't do, he can fix it for us. The things that we can't say, God can say it with us. The things that the way we can act, God can help us to act the way we ought to act. I'm talking about a godly mother. There is nothing that I've told you before, I've told you over and over again. It doesn't matter how old she is. It doesn't matter how she's built. It doesn't matter how she's shaped. She deserves respect. Young women, make, make men respect you. Make don't let them talk to you any kind of way. No, don't, don't let them make a song where, where you jumping and bombing and, and all under your clothes. That's not godly character. In my day, I, I love the song that, that, that Brother Miles used to jam to all night long. Uh, they talked about love and happiness. They, they didn't talk up on the woman's clothes. They, they talked about how sweet you are. And baby, when I look at you, things just happen to me. The Manhattans, the Manhattans would sing a song, I, I never, I will never, never hurt you. They encourage women. Brothers, let's make sure that we be in the group that encourage women so women can be godly mothers. Don't influence them to be ungodly women. When you are a godly mother, you have a godly character, you don't have to tell people you are God. You don't have to tell them that you're born again. They can see it before you show up. Matter of fact, they can hear it when you start speaking. You don't have to put on a suit, you don't have to put on high heels, you don't have to put on dresses. They can see who you are before you get to them. They can see your meek and quiet spirit. Let me tell you, mama, 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 don't embarrass your children with your boisterous mouth. Come on, don't, 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 don't let the world hear you before they see you. <laughs> don't, don't let them, I mean, this is how I am, and they just going to have to accept me how I am. That says that you're not willing to grow. You're not willing to interact with God. You're not willing for God to make a difference in your life. Let me tell you, if you're going to be a wise mother, if you're going to be a wise mother that children respect and men respect and the community respect, you need to be of God. You need to love the Lord with all your heart. My next point is a, a wise mother is a woman of integrity. She does what's right even when no one's looking. Yeah. Uh -huh. Mama, Mama taught us that at an early age, and, and she would say crazy stuff like this. This would be crazy to young people these days. Mama would say crazy stuff like this. If you're wrong, you're wrong, even if you belong to me. That's right. All right. All right. You see, godly mothers, wise mothers, do not support their children in wrong, and they are not, it's not hard for them to see when their children are wrong, and they correct them in the midst of what's wrong. Yes, sir. 
Some will say stuff like, yeah, you're wrong. And, and you're wrong even though you're mine. I love you, but you're wrong. And I don't want to see you do it ever again. I don't want to hear tell of it ever again. At all. A wise mother is a woman of integrity. She don't sneak and dive. She doesn't wait till it's dark to, to make her move. She's a woman of integrity. Wherever you see her, you can know that she's doing what's right at the given time. She's a woman of integrity. A godly mother focuses on her own household. Proverbs 31, what Sister Woods read in our hearing for devotion, this woman focused on her own household. I might as well park right here and let women know. Proverbs 31 doesn't talk about a stay-at-home mother. Proverbs 31, you may have it it's somewhere else in the Bible, but Proverbs 31 doesn't, doesn't talk about a woman that's a housewife. Proverbs 31 talks about a woman who gets up early in the morning and makes breakfast for her children. Proverbs 31 talks about a woman who children call her blessed, and not only does her children call her blessed, her husband called her blessed. And you don't have to be a mother with children to be one that is called blessed. Wherever you go, you are a blessing to others. In Proverbs 31, it says that her husband is blessed because of her. In other words, her influence makes him look good. It makes him, makes him look good. It says when he goes to the marketplace, the men says, oh, there come her husband. And they give him credit and they give him influence because of the influence of his wife. Are you influencing him? Are you building him up? Or are you tearing him down? Let me tell you, in, 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 our, in our culture, men are being beat up on the job. They're being beat up in the community. And when they come to the house, they need a woman that will say, this is your refuge. You don't have anything to worry about here. She looks out for a household. Matter of fact, Proverbs 31 doesn't even talk about a woman that doesn't work. It does just the opposite. It talks about a woman who goes into the marketplace, she sows and makes flat, she makes sure that things are covered for her household. Uh -huh. She's a godly woman, a woman with integrity, and she looks out for her household. One, one version of the Bible says it like this, she works hard for her own household. And let me tell you, if you got, if you're working hard enough for your own household, you don't have time to deal with anybody else's household. Uh -huh. Especially in the 21st century. There's some stuff going on in the 21st century. If you're just doing right about your household, you don't have time to talk about Sally and Sue's household. A wise woman looks out for her household so much so until she spent her time at her household building up her household because she is a wise woman. She focused on her own household. My next point is that a godly woman is a woman who's committed to her children. She has committed. She's building those children up. She, she's committed. She's all in. And the children know she's all in. They don't have to doubt it. They don't have to wonder. They don't have to say, this is going to be here or not. I'm, I have fear that, that it won't be taken care of because a godly, wise mother, she makes, makes sure that her children are taken care of and the children can depend on her because she's committed to her children. Just committed. She's, she's committed to her children so much so that they can depend on it. Matter of fact, they go out in the streets and tell folk, I can depend on my mama. I can, I can trust her. I can tell her. Man, I, one time I got in real big trouble. I got in big, huge trouble. I didn't do it, but it was pinned on me. And guess what? I called home. Daddy wasn't there. I called for daddy. Daddy wasn't there. But mama answered the phone. 
I'm 150 miles away down in Alcorn State University. I'm 150 miles away. Didn't do anything out of the ordinary, but it got pinned on me. I mean, I'm out there, and it's late at night. First of all, Mama knew something was wrong before I called. I didn't even stay with her at that time. She had that motherly intuition. She didn't even, she didn't even know whether I was going or coming, but I called home. That's why you treat your mama right, because, because there will come a day where her statement will come true. Go on and treat me bad if you want to. You would need me <laughs> before I need you. So mama is committed. She's committed. She's committed. And she didn't sleep all night long until she got me some help. And I said, Mama, don't worry about it. Don't, I'll just call her for daddy. Well, why do you want your daddy? Something's wrong. So she went next door and got the police officer next door. And they came over and he laughed about it. And mama was disturbed about it. And he laughed some more about it because he knew the law. And he knew that he was going to just let me be fearful all night long. He was just going to let me go through the process. He wasn't going to call anybody. He wasn't going to do anything. He wasn't going to get in touch with anybody. He just had him a good laugh. Since, you, since your mama woke me up, I'm going to laugh all night. And it's because mama was committed. And she wasn't committed just because she gave birth to me. She was committed because she had that intuition and, and she knew that, that something wasn't right. She, she knew and when she kept questioning me, it was tearing me apart and I never told her. Because she's committed. So a wise mother is committed. A wise mother is compassionate to other people. One thing that, one thing I, I, never, I never wanted to date anybody and you know how long that been. I never wanted to date anybody who I saw dogging other people out. I never wanted to date anybody who could mistreat other folk and be good with that. I never wanted to date anybody who could mistreat their mama and daddy and be good with that. Because I knew since Whitlock it was just a matter of time before I get treated just like she treats them. I never wanted anybody that would fly off the handle at the drop of her hat. I, I never wanted anybody that would just downright embarrass herself, me, and everybody around her in public. I, I never wanted that. I always wanted somebody like Mama. Mama didn't say much, but she would look at you. And just that look, just that look, Brother Dearworth, just that look. But say, you wait till I get you home. <laughs> just, that, just that look. She would, she would be compassionate to other folk, but she would be uncompassionate to me. And she didn't have to say it. And whatever I was doing, that look made me stop it. She trained and taught us, always treat people like you want to be treated. Don't treat people differently because of the color of their skin. Don't treat people differently because you don't know them. Don't treat people differently because the way they treat you. So a wise mother is one who is compassionate with other people. They're compassionate. She's compassionate. She, she's a woman who's compassionate. She, and, and when she serves, she serves everybody. I remember the days when my brother, my brother played football and then my, the two of us, the other two of us, played baseball. And when, when the boys would come by the house, they would gather around the stove like it's their stove. And I would say, Glenn, you don't live here. Robert, you don't live here. Get from around my mama's stove. As a matter of fact, you, you don't even deserve to eat anything the way you dropped that ball on the field today. You, matter of fact, you ought not be eating anything. And mama would say, leave that boy alone. Don't, don't touch him. It's because she had compassion even on jokers that didn't deserve it. My brother would come in, 
Big old 265 pound linemen in the ninth grade, they're 265 pounds. They eat up air as they go. And they would, jump, they would come in and they would be hugging all over my mama and say, hey, Miss Rosie. I mean, she just, they just hugged her and buttered her up and said, baby, go on to the restroom, wash your hands. And they, they didn't eat and chew their food. They just scoffed it down. Oh. I said, man, you're not at home. Daddy has to buy that food. Daddy said, leave the boy alone. The wise mother is one who's compassionate with other folk children because she knows something that we don't know. The wise mother knows if I treat somebody else's child right or I treat somebody else right, then God is going to bring somebody around my child that will go over and beyond to bless my child. Because I'm going to just tell you, I'm just warning you now, when they get five, they get rebellious. You talking about, you talking about terrible twos? They ain't terrible, they just, they just rebellious. And there will come a day when you cannot speak into your own child's life. And God is going to have to create an atmosphere for, for somebody else to speak into your child's life. So you better treat other people's children right because there will be a day where God will move upon somebody else. And all you have to do is say, Lord, have mercy. When your child is climbing up fool's hill, God has a way of putting someone in their path. Maybe somebody you don't even know. God has a way of blessing you because you bless others. Yes, Wise mothers already know. They, they already know. I got to make sure that I treat Miss Bessie's child better than, than somebody else because I know that one of these days these children are going to get out of hand. And I'm not speaking damnation into your child's life, but as long as they got red blood running in their bodies, yes, <laughs> something will happen. Paul says in Romans chapter 7, he says, as a saved man, every time I would to do good, evil is present with me. Evil is all around our children. And it has gotten more evil by the day. Matter of fact, the world hadn't gotten more evil. It has gotten more evil. But our legislature are legislating evil. And double daring our children to do what's right. Therefore, God has to bless our children regardless of where we are and where we go. So we must have compassion on other people. The sixth thing is we must... Be consistent in our dealings. Must be consistent. A wise mother is consistent in her dealings. I mean, in my household, I don't know about in yours, but I can sit there and beg all day, day long. If it was no before I started begging, it's no 25 minutes later. Well, well, mama, after them going, yeah, after there's a week's. You are Davis. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you know, for some household, daddies have to say that mama had no problem with telling us that. If it was no, you can sit there and beg all you want to. The problem with the 21st century mama, she gives in because she thinks she's their friend. You, you, you can't be a friend of theirs, and you, can't, you, ought to, you ought to joke with them, you ought to laugh with them, you ought, to, you ought to walk with them, you ought to watch movies with them, you ought to play ball with them, you ought to do things with them, but don't ever allow them to get on your level and they think that you are their friend, because the moment they think that you are their friend, they're going to be able to talk to you as if you are their friend. You must maintain a level of confidence and maintain a level of respect that their friends will never obtain. Right, 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 right. And you have to be consistent. Right. You have to be consistent. Something we didn't even have to ask, Mama. We already knew the answer. We, we, <laughs> can I? Don't, we, don't even part your mouth. Because she was consistent. She was consistent. The 21st century Mama is not consistent enough. Not consistent. And, and if you come to the point where you are their friend, they don't consider you serious about motherhood. 
spend time with them, do all the things that they do, do all the things that they do, but there ought to be a level that maintain regardless of what happens. Regardless of what happened. Mama doesn't even have to worry about it. She, my mama, my mother-in-law, and my wife are the three most spoiled women in this world. You can say amen right there. You can see it. I mean, because there's a level of influence that was there from day one, and because that level of influence was there and that respect was there, it will always be an opportunity to respect them. And so you need to understand that the mother must be consistent in her dealings. My next point to you today is the mother uses her resources wisely. A wise mother will always utilize her resources wisely. I you see other folk, I you see other folk with their girls, with their boys, and the women will dress to a tee. Uh-huh. And the children look like they've just been drugged out from under rock. You see, the mama was more concerned, those mothers were more concerned about the show that they can put on than, than taking care of her own household. These mothers, these mothers, these mothers make sure, this mother makes sure that her resources are, are well taken care of. She, she doesn't go out and, and buy stuff when she don't have it. Uh -huh. Don't raise your hand. Have you ever gotten to a point where, where you're just looking at stuff and you decide, I'm going to get it anyhow? Oh. <laughs> My mama was out one day with a lady. Can't call her name. She was out one day with a lady. And uh, my mama said she likes that. And the lady said to her, well, girl, go and get it. My mama said, no. I got to pay my bills. She said, don't worry about the bills. The bills will take care of itself. And you told my bills, girl, we shopping today. And then they'll use stuff like this. Sister Hugh, you, 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 you deserve this. Uh, I've said it before. If, if you buy bags or some shoes, you ought to buy whatever you want to buy. But if you pay $5,000 for a bag and shoes, you ought to have $500,000 somewhere else. Because a wise mama know that their children are going to need something one day, and it may be for their life and their death. You need to know that you have to put something aside and use your resources wisely. You have to use your resources wisely. You, can't, you just can't have everything. You got children now. You just can't do what you used to do. You can't hang with who you used to hang with. You can't go where you used to go. You can't stay as long as you used to stay. Those children belong to you. They belong to you, whether you adopted them, whether you, you had them, whether somebody donated them to you. They belong to you. And God is holding you accountable to handle your resources in such a way that your children would never want for anything. David says, David says, I once was young. Now I'm old, and out of all the things I've seen in my life, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, and I've never seen the seed of the righteous begging for bread. And if you don't use your resources properly, you are not among the righteous. You have to make sure that you use your resources properly so you can be confirmed as a wise mother. A wise mother is content with the way the Lord blesses. A wise mother is content. I just said she's content with what the Lord blesses. Because all of us want more of what the God, God has, right? We always want more. The Apostle Paul says, I've learned to be a base and I've learned to abound. And whatsoever state I am, I've learned to be satisfied. I've learned to be content. So we are not content many times with what we have, but we ought to be content with the way the Lord blesses. Because God is consistent in his blessing. We have to be content with the way the Lord blesses. Yes, sir. With the way God blesses. God can bless you in a way that you've never been blessed before. But when he blesses you, you ought to thank him. Yes. You ought to praise him. Yes. You ought to lift him and magnify him. You ought to be content with the way God blesses. Yes. The psalmist says that God 
God showed his ways to Moses, but he showed his acts to the people of Israel. You see, the leader, in this case, the mother, whether you're married or not, you have to be wise enough to examine God enough to know his ways. Because when it says that God showed his ways to Moses and he showed his acts to the children of Israel, what he's really saying is every leader, whether you're leading in the household or at church, every leader, whether you're in the community or at school, every leader needs to know God's ways. Because the people who follow you are only concerned about the acts. They're concerned about the deeds. They, they're concerned about what you can give us. They're concerned about how we're going to eat. Your child never asks you, Daddy, where am I, or Mama, when am I going to get another job? They ask you, but what we're going to eat today? And children these days have the nerve, the audacity to go and say, I don't eat that. I, I don't eat that. I, I, ain't, I ain't trying to do that. I ain't trying to do that. I don't eat that. You know how many times I ate stuff that I never ate before? You know how many times I had to refrain myself from just saying I didn't eat that? And then if I got it, I had to eat all of it. Every last bit of it because we weren't, racing, we weren't wasting anything. Resources were limited. And the children knew that the resources were limited. And then we do stuff like this. We'll Daddy work all day long. He comes home, and we just sit at the table like we, be, we haven't eaten anything. Look real pitiful, and then he give us some of his. And Mama said, get up from that table. Leave your dad alone. Go out there and throw some chunny berries or something. We have to understand that resources are God's sources that God has given us. These resources God has provided for us. Don't swander them because it will get to a point where you will find yourself like the prodigal son. And the Bible says that it was when he had lost all that a famine set in. Let me tell you, when things go wrong, they go wrong really fast. Uh -huh. Yesterday I paid $4.09 for nine tenths of a gallon of gas. I said $4.09 for nine tenths. And you do know when it said nine tenths, that's not a whole gallon, right? So it got to be somewhere around four four twenty five for a gallon of gas. Four dollars, four hundred, four dollars and nine cents for nine tenths of a gallon of gas. But guess what? I kept right on pumping because we couldn't show up. <laughs> On Sunday, we we go, we gonna show up on Monday, so we might as well show up on Sunday, because the God that we serve is the one who's our source. He's just given us resources by which we're going to do things with. So don't misuse the resources and then tell God, God, I can't make it to church today. I ain't got no gas. Well, where where'd you go all week? What do you do all week? So God has a way of blessing us, and a wise mother does not misuse the blessings of God, and she's content with the way the Lord blesses. Uh -huh. A ninth thing to you today is the, the wise mother is prayerful in tribulations. Uh -huh. The wise mother will stay up all night praying for her baby. And when we look at it from the outside, daddy laying over there snoring, slobbing, and sleeping. And mama is praying out loud, saying, Lord, in the name of Jesus, bless my baby. Keep my baby safe today. And daddy might tell you to get up and go in the other room and call on the Lord. Matter of fact, that's when daddy say, you've been asking the Lord that. Just let's leave it at the altar. But mama prays her children through tribulations. I mean, when things, when things are going wrong, she knows how to call on God. She knows how to tell God 
all about it. She, she knows, matter of fact, she knows her child and she knows her God. And because she knows her God, she can tell her God about her child. And she can tell her God what her child is doing when her child doesn't even admit what he's doing because she knows her God. The God we serve is a revealing God. It, it wasn't just an inkling she woke up in the middle of the night and said, my child needs prayer. It wasn't just an inkling when she said, don't hang out with that crowd. I, I can see something wrong. It, it just wasn't something that she's trying to make you do and keep you in the house. It's simply because she's been in touch with God. And because she's been in touch with God, God has been speaking and God is going to deliver you if you just obey her. When I, when I go home, I'm almost 60. I'm almost 60. Brother Bob, I'm almost 60 years old. And I praise the Lord for it. Pastor Johnson, you say, I'm one year from 60. I'm one year from 60. So I'm almost 60 years old, and I go home. And I said, Mama, I'm going to run across town. She said, sit down. I'm so scared to move. I had to sit there and wait on her to change her mind. And, and it's because I believe she has this connection with God until she can say some things and she's trying to save me from some things. That's right. That's right. And, she, and she doesn't explain herself. You know, Susan and law my mama doesn't do a lot of explaining. She just tell you what to do and guess what you do? You do it. She doesn't have to threaten you. I see mamas in the grocery store. One, two, three. It would be counts three. One, it hits you. Two, you hit the floor. Three, you're getting up off the floor. Are they, they're raking you up off the floor. I mean, and mamas, and say, and I told you once, mama never said that. She never said I told you once because the first time she told you, she expected you to get it done then. I told you when mama go, go to work and came back, it was, always, it was always three boys before a girl was born. So when she was born, we were, we were teenagers. And when, she walked, when we saw that car coming down that dusty road, when she got in the house, the house smelled like pine salt and purex. The dishes were washed. The floors were swept. The, floor, the, 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 the toys were put up. And guess what? The parking, the, the yard had been swept also. And then while we swept the yard, the carports, not, not the garage, the carports got dusted. So now we're watering the carports off. And when she walked in the house, she wouldn't say the mumbling word, but one thing, I like it like this. Because she smelled Purex. She smelled pine saw. She could go and look in the toilet and all the rings are missing from the toilet. It's because of respect. And it's because mama was a praying person and we wanted her to pray us through tribulations. The final thing I say to you today is a wise mother sacrifices for her children. A wise mother sacrifices for her children. We went to car dealership and there's a used car dealership, so you know they can they can talk women into everything. Uh, they 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 glamorize it, and this used car dealer. And I, I was I was probably a preteen. And this used car dealer told my mama, "Well, I can get you this car for this down payment." And mama said to him, "I am not going to empty my bank account for no car from you." She said, "I got children to feed. I have children in school." I have a husband that's looking forward to me making a, a right decision. So she sacrificed what she wanted for the household. Uh -huh. She sacrificed what she thought she needed for the household. She went there with the purpose in mind, and daddy had given his blessings. She went there with the purpose in mind of buying another car. 
But even with that daddy being there, she said, I got to make a sacrifice for my family. Let me just share with you today. Sacrifices are made every day by women for the sake of children and their husbands. Let me bag up and park right here and let you know. Now, there are some women who are single who are making sacrifices for men. You need to throw that rascal on down the road as far as you can take him. The Bible says if he doesn't work, he ought to starve. He ought to eat. He ought not eat. <laughs> and the church ought not benefit him either. Matter of fact, if he doesn't eat, guess what? You, we ought to watch him dry up like a prune and die on the vine. We got, we got women, women who work and sacrifice. And they leave this joker who won't work at home, drive their car, drop them off at their job. And then tell him she'll be back. And then when she get off at 5, he shows up at 545. And you better not say, why are you late? But a good mother sacrifices for her children. And then she doesn't put a man over her children that do not mean her children well. That's right. That's right. She sacrifices her intimacy. She sacrifices her emotion. She sacrificed uh, looking good. She sacrificed even a home for her children. And that's why I had to tell my daughter and I tell others, there'll come a time in your life where your parents stop giving to you and you start giving to your parents. There ought to come a time in your life where your parents stop making sacrifices for you and you ought to be making sacrifices for your parents. Whatever they want, regardless, if, if they just want the house painted green, give them, make sure they have it. And you ought to sacrifice for them. We have, but see, young people have to be encouraged at an early age to value those who take care of them. You have, to, you, you have to teach them what you want them to do when you get old. You have to teach them. I, I'm telling you, the Bible says if you teach them the, and you train them, they will grow up and they will not leave. But let me just share with you. They are guilty of climbing fool's hill. They are guilty of getting with the wrong crowd. They, they are guilty of doing things because I did it. They are do, guilty of doing things behind your back. That's why you would never say, you should never say, my child wouldn't do that. <laughs> Baby, your child left the house dressed like a Sunday school girl, and when she got where she wanted to go, she was dressed like a slut. Let me tell you, don't tell anybody what your child won't do. You just keep making sacrifices and keep making sacrifices and, and keep pouring into them the word of God. And that's what happened over 2,000 years ago. The greatest sacrifice was made and God made the sacrifice for you and for me. You see, mothers are good mothers because God is a good father. Mothers are good mothers. They are wise mothers because the God that we serve is a wise God. God saw us going down the drain. God saw us on our way to hell. But he sent his son, Jesus Christ, over 2,000 years ago as the greatest sacrifice of all time. Yeah, they killed my Lord. They, hit, they killed my God. They killed him. Mean men killed him on a skull hill called Calvary. He took his own cross up the hill. They, they hung him between two thieves. And they nailed him tight. They riveted him in real good. They killed him on an old rugged cross. He died, I tell you. They, they took a spear and stuck it in his side. Out came blood and water. He was the ultimate sacrifice. He died on Calvary. They laid him in a barber tomb. He was the ultimate sacrifice. Yes, my Lord and your God. He, he died on Calvary. They laid him in a barber tomb. But that's not how the story is. Two days later, three days later, he rose again. He stayed there one day. Stayed there two days. But on the third day, he rose with all power. All power in heaven and earth. He rose. He got up with all power. In heaven and earth in his hand. That same Jesus. 
Yeah, he got up for you. He made the sacrifice for us. He got up for me. He tabernacled around here. Some 40 days, he caught a cloud. Got out of here. But one of these old days, he's going to catch another cloud. He's going to come back in here. He's going to stop in midair. And the dead in Christ shall rise. And those of us who remain shall be caught up with him in midair. And we will forever be with the Lord. If the organ is too loud down here, we're going to have a show enough party over there. If the drums are too loud over here, we're going to have a celebration over there. If the piano is too loud over here, we're going to be with Jesus over there. If the saxophone is too loud over here, you better get ready. The Bible says we're going to get around the throne of God. We're going to join the four beastly creatures. We're going to cry out, holy, holy, holy. Blessed is the Lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. Are you going to be there? Will you join me on the other side? He made the ultimate sacrifice for us on this side. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You ought to come to Jesus just as you are. Don't, don't wait till you get it right. You'll never get it right. You have to come to Jesus and let him get it right for you. If you have not been a good mother, this is your moment. If you have not been a good child, this is your moment. You ought to come to Jesus. If you've never confessed Jesus as your personal Savior, this is your opportunity to come to him. Believe in the story that over 2,000 years ago, Jesus died on Calvary. They laid him to rest in a borrowed tomb. But the good news is, early that third day moment, he got up with all power. And heaven and earth is his hand. If you never confess Christ as your Savior, just bow your head with me right now. And then invite him in. Just repeat after me in saying these words. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul in Jesus' name. Amen and thank God. We believe that if you receive Jesus as your Savior, you're on your way to heaven when you die. There are others of us who, who fall short, who mess up, who have not done the things that are pleasing in the sight of God. Let us pray with each other and for each other. Father God, we come now. We confess our sins. We repent of our sins. We ask you to forgive us. Creating us a new spirit. Creating us a right spirit. Cleanse us and wash us with the blood of Jesus as only you can. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. And we thank God for who he is and what he's already done. It is now offering time. It is time to give to the Lord through tithes and offering. I said it's offering time. It's time to give to the Lord through tithes and offering. Yes, Lord. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand and you will be served. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand and you will be served. There are two envelopes. There's a white one with blue writing and a, a white one with red writing. The blue writing... Uh, is for your tithes, offering, and your sacrificial gifts. And the red and white envelope is for the pastor's love offering. You can choose one or you can choose both. And we will gladly accept your gifts. 
For those of you who wants to give electronically, you can do so by giving to our Zelle account, lifting.jesus at yahoo.com, lifting.jesus at yahoo.com, lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. If you're still using the mail, you can uh, mail your offering, your gifts to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Father God, we thank you for this privilege of giving. We ask you to bless every gift, bless every giver. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. I'm going to ask this side to stand. Follow first impressions from the rear to the front and bring forth the Lord's tithes offering and sacrificial gift.
is going to be called a mother's love. There is no love like a mother's. Her heart is filled with care. With Christ as her example, her Savior's love she'll share. A mother's love is endless, not changing for all time. When needed by her children, a mother's love will shine. God bless these special mothers. God bless them, everyone, for all their tears and heartaches and special work they've done. When days on earth are over, a mother's love lives on. Through many generations, God's blessings on each one. Be thankful for our mothers who love with higher love from power God has given and strength from up above because mother, mother is, is a word, word that, that means the world, world to, to us. Amen. Thank you. A tribute to all of the mothers. Thank you all so much. Always pray for us. And the scripture reading 